All right, guys, uh, welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we are gonna talk about email marketing, and we're gonna be talking about nine automated ways, uh, sequences that you can use um, for your email campaigns in order to generate revenue, okay? So things like um, when somebody purchases uh, from your store, they get an order confirmation, is there an opportunity to maybe upsell? Um, we talk also about, say, pre-shipping emails as well. Uh, another opportunity to sort of maybe upsell or cross-sell and increase the average order value. Then you have things like your um, welcome series as well. Uh, that's also a great way too of actually enticing um, your customers to buy further with you again. And uh, I'll just go over a few other methods basically, but um, I'm gonna go over nine and they're directly related to, these email flows are di directly related to uh, making, um, having your customers purchase from you, okay? So um, yeah, without further ado, Let's uh, hop into my computer and take a look. All right, guys, so, you know, let's start off here with an introduction. Um, I, I get asked by brand owners and marketing managers about email marketing and the different types of email flows and campaigns uh, an e-commerce store should be putting in place to, to generate more sales. So in today's kind of post presentation, um, I, I wanna talk about the, the sequences you can use to generate sales uh, from your email marketing. You know, email, email marketing is a fantastic retargeting and communication channel to use uh, for your business. So it's personal and, and very effective to engage with your, with your customers. So let's dive straight in. So let's, let's talk about the uh, sequence one, which is card abandonment, okay? So I, I've spoken about this in previous presentations and um, card abandonment is a serious problem. Uh, and unfortunately you can't recover all shopping card abandonment, okay? And the fact is that the overwhelming majority of shopping carts are gonna be abandoned, certainly first time around. So you, you know, with this, with this sort of knowledge at hand, we, we um, or you need to, to, to have a sequence in place that gets people focused back on their shopping cart and completing their purchase. So the Baymard uh, Institution has stated uh, as much as 70% of shopping carts get, uh, you know, go, go into abandonment. So if, if all you did was capture 10% of those sales, how much money would you be, would that add, sorry, to, to your business? Um, you know, some, some business owners think, uh, you know, if people are abandoning the, the cart, uh, they just don't want to, you know, buy the product, okay? Um, I believe this to be, you know, untrue because if people are micro committed to clicking that add to cart button, then they are sort of expressing an intent to, to buy. So continuing on, uh, the fact is that distractions happen during the close of a sale online, okay? Um, the, the, the customer may have a problem checking out, there could be some technical difficulties, they may just be window shopping, for example, uh, their phone rings or the kids are calling them, they get distracted. Uh, it could also be the case that they got turned off by additional fees such as taxes or shipping, uh, or the site asked them to sign up uh, in order to complete their purchase. So what you need to do is start implementing an, an abandoned card email sequence to start recovering those lost sales. Even even with just a you know a three to six email uh, sequence, you'd you'd be amazed at, by how powerful that can be for um for recovering your card abandonment. Okay, and uh, you know many marketers believe that you know if we send the first card abandonment email and they don't buy, uh, they they don't want what we're offering. So this is not the the case at all. You have to follow up multiple times. So uh, by sending that second email the next day and the third email the day after that and, and so on and so forth, you can capture as much as you know, 30 to 50% more sales uh, just by, by adding those two follow-ups, okay? Uh, and the fortune is always in the follow-up and, and you need to, to have uh, you know, persistence in order to acquire people's attention again, okay? So here's an example uh, email sequence you could uh, implement over a five to seven day period, okay? So Send them a gentle reminder to complete uh, their checkout process and talk about the outcome of the product and the impact it will have on the customer. Uh, keep it very personal and conversational. Uh, take them more, sorry, tell them more about your, you know, your brand and, you know, your identity and what your mission is. And at the same time, give them a gentle nudge to complete their, their purchase. And then you can send over a 10 to 15% discount with some scarcity to help push them across the line. And these are all now emails, by the way, okay? So uh, good time to show social proof reviews in another email uh, and also mention that the uh, coupon discount is going to expire soon. 
And then a follow-up email after that again, of course, would be increase the discount to 20%, uh, telling them how much you want to get this product um, on their hands, basically, okay? So again, last one, send them a, a reminder that their coupon will expire soon and address any sort of questions or queries they might have. So any kind of sales objections and that kind of thing. Now, sequence two is browse abandonment. And here we talk about visitors who are browsing your store online but abandon after some time to view something else on the internet. So what the browse abandonment sequence does is simply follow up with someone if they look at an item, but don't add it to their cart. So sometimes people just need a little bit of a gentle reminder. It's all about connecting with your prospects and customers with multiple touch points in order to encourage them further down your sales funnel. So this should be a three part you know, email sequence that's nice and simple. Uh, we just follow up with these people, okay? Um, but just bear in mind that you know you won't encourage 100% of these people to buy. Um, they're in buy, they're in sorry browse mode and haven't exactly come to a conclusion on purchasing from your brand. So continuing on, um, even if you're only getting two to four percent of people to purchase through that sequence, so out of every 500 people, if 10 people buy, an average order value of 50, which can happen every single day, that's you know 500 quid. So these small increments in sales add up over the course of the month and with the card abandonment sequence in place, uh, the numbers can definitely get um, you know, interesting. So the browse abandonment recovers sales by providing a gentle nudge to those visitors. All you have to do is just show the, the product in the email, pulling, pulling it in dynamically uh, for, for each person. So you basically say things like, uh, hey, we see you checked out uh, product X and we're wondering if you have any questions, were you interested in this? And you know, enough people will, will actually say, yes, uh, actually I was, thanks for reminding me, and then they go and purchase. So if you can stack value for your products, uh, be sure to mention it in the email, and maybe you can offer free shipping maybe, or a free sample gift, entry into a giveaway. You know, get creative with stacking value basically. Encourage them, make it, make it simple for them to make a decision on going, wow, there's a lot of value to be, um, to be had here. It's worth my time. And, um, you know, the, the value, the value, um, value to cost ratio is, is value heavy. So they, they, they just see this as, as something that's worth their time. So they go and actually, um, come back to your site. And like you said, two to 4% um, out of every 500. Uh, if, if 10 people buy on the average order is 50 on your store, that's 500 um, you know, euro, dollar, pound a day. And that is not to be sniffed at, so. So the third sequence um, I'll, I'll touch on today is like welcome series. So the goal of the welcome sequence is to introduce yourself as a brand, warm up your audience, by showing the value you can bring to their lives, um, explaining the type of uh, outcomes that are addressed with your brand and get people to, to make that first purchase. So you can also share success stories, um, testimonials from customers, as well as pointing to educational content on your blog. And educating your audience is a fantastic way to build, you know, the likes of trust, rapport and uh, respect, uh, a likability, that kind of thing. So. All these angles help to develop and nurture your brand's relationship with your audience. So deliver as much value as possible and you'll, you'll win more customers and build out higher levels of uh, lifetime value over their duration of your customer's um, time with, uh, with your brand. So continuing on with the welcome series, um, some brands will offer you know, 10 or 20% off uh, you know, a coupon if, if you join their email list and what happens then is that you you then get put into their welcome series, okay, or the welcome sequence. So you you want to you want to get them to use uh, you know th that coupon code, but not everyone is you know essentially ready to buy. But uh, this sequence below uh, gives you the opportunity to build a strong bond with your customers or even prospects, should I say, uh, as well as increase their trust and loyalty towards um, your brand. So here's a basic structure of this sequence, okay? So email one is provide a value discount uh, they signed up for, along with a little sort of introduction to the value you are offering as a brand. Uh, email two is uh, going more in depth about who you are and telling your story, explain why you're different, your point of difference and stuff like that, okay? 
Uh, email three is frame the problem or desires of your target market and show how other companies are different and how you help uh, to, um, you know, to sort of create a desired need or, or you know, eradicate a pain point. Uh, email four can be, you know, share a success story, a case study testimonial. Same thing again with email five. Email six can be a uh, value add. So a lot of content, you know, works like this. Okay. So con educational content from, from the likes of your blog, for example. And then you can also uh, do email seven, which is, you know, add value again and uh, also pitch, pitch your, um, pitch your products. So sequence four is uh, order confirmation email. So this is the email that a customer receives when they have completed their order. And these emails get pretty high open rates. So on average, they get about sort of a 50 to 90% open rate. And this is because customers want to know their transaction has been acknowledged and the, the transaction is living up to their expectations. So order confirmation uh, emails build more trust with your customers and convey a reliable customer experience. And uh, these, these emails might not be your sort of highest performing in terms of uh, revenue generated, but they can give an opportunity to upsell or cross sell other products in your catalog. Now, apart from transaction ID, name of product, tracking number, and your support email, um, why not use a little excitement and fun copy in the order confirmation email? So you can tell them how happy they are uh, that you are uh, as a brand that they've purchased from you. Um, set expectations by explaining that your team is at this very moment, you know, fulfilling their order, and that it's due to be shipped out in X amount of time. Now, as mentioned previously, you can also present more offers as a way of upselling or cross-selling your customer. And uh, you can even keep them engaged with your brand by linking out to trending content on your site. So for example, let's say Black Friday is approaching and you have a piece of blog content that lists the top 10 products that will be for sale during this period. And you can break down each product and explain why it's ranked in the list. Uh, for each listed product, you can mention the price, the benefits, the desired outcomes, the problem it solves, along with other any other sort of uh, value you can stack to really pique your audience's interest. And blog content like this will nurture your audience into paying more attention to other emails from your brand and get them excited about the irresistible offers you will have on the horizon. So once customers order and read uh, an email similar to the ideas mentioned, it's a much higher chance uh, they'll they'll keep coming back to buy from you again. Now, sequence five, pre-shipping email. So send this email either immediately or a few hours after a customer buys. Uh, this is your opportunity to generate uh, more revenue by upselling your customer before the order is about to be shipped out. So with the pre-shipping email, you can say something along the lines of, hey, we had brand name, uh, just wanted to say a big thank you for your, your order. Uh, just so you know, we're fulfilling your order right now. Before we ship your order out, would you like us to throw in upsell, whatever the upsell is? So uh, this upsell will make your order more, um, you can explain then more powerful, quicker, stronger, more convenient, get even better results, take away more pain, enhance pleasure, that kind of thing. Now you can even ask them if they want to buy a cross-sell item, accessory product or something that complements the original product better. So the great the great thing about this type of email is that the customer is still kind of hovering around that buying mode because they, you know, have recently purchased. So it's a good opportunity to increase the average order value, okay? Uh, getting two to four sales a day from this sequence at an average order value of fifty uh, dollars, euros, pounds, whatever you work with adds up to 100 or even 200 um, um, in extra uh, daily revenue. So even if it's only 100 a day in extra revenue, that's you know 36,500 a year at minimum uh, on the low end from a simple uh, pre-shipping email. So you might want to consider pre-shipping as, uh, as part of your sort of sequence. Now, sequence six, uh, post-purchase review email. Now, one thing I'm a big advocate of is showing off social proof. This is typically in the form of reviews, testimonials, or leveraging authority from other brands in the marketplace. So gathering reviews provides incredible social proof. Um, it's also, 
it also sort of helps to build our trust, authority, respect, and credibility. Okay, so I read a statistic not so long ago that 80 to 90 percent of people will read reviews before they make a buying decision about something online, and uh, people people always like to guess the opinion and recommendation from others that are going through the the same pain point or desired need. Okay. So they want to get someone else's opinion to support their own decision of making a purchase. So this is even more so when the product at hand is considered high ticket. Um, as a brand, you need to find a way to incentivize people to include those reviews. So here are a few suggestions to help you build out that social proof. So once they've had a chance to not only receive the product, but also to use it, uh, try sending them out an automated post-purchase email after a certain amount of time that passes, okay? So in this email, you want to ask them what they think about the product they purchased, what was their experience of dealing with you as a brand. Uh, you can incentivize these people to get them to respond. So an easy way to do this and garner their attention is to say something like, hey, leave us a review. We'll give you X percent off towards your next uh, purchase. So you'll get a number of people to not only leave their reviews and feedback, but uh, they'll also end up making a second or third purchase because of it. All right, so sequence seven is the VIP sequence. Now, I'm sure you've heard about the Pareto Principle. Um, when explaining the Pareto Principle in business, we say that 20% of your customers are accounting for 80% of uh, your revenue generated. Now, your VIP customers, the top 10%, may indeed account for about 50% of your uh, revenue, if not more. And uh, the top 10% of your customer base is your most kind of valuable uh, customers. Um, these are people who spend the most money with your brand. These are people that come back and purchase from you repeatedly over time. So make these customers feel special, encourage and reward their loyalty and thank them for supporting your brand. Uh, you can take this a step further by asking them their opinion on how to make your brand better by filling out a short survey and incentivizing those that complete the survey. So the VIPs are the customers who've purchased more than at least three times or have spent a certain amount of money on your store, okay? Uh, and they are not the lead or customer who hasn't opened your emails in the past, say, 60 or even 90 days. So sequence eight, uh, cross-sell and upsell automations. Now, it's a great achievement when you have a customer who has purchased from your brand. Um, you know, you've done enough persuasion and created a lot of value to have this valued person, you know, complete a purchase. So, however, your job doesn't stop there, okay? So, after someone has purchased from your brand, there's always a time when they might want to buy again. And there are various ways to make this next purchase happen. So, let's say, for example, your brand sells consumables. Uh, that's a product that needs replenished um, on you know a regular basis because it's uh, it wears out or, or gets used up and one of your customers has has almost sort of run out of their say face cream or finished their case of wine uh, whatever the consumable is there okay so let's imagine the stock they uh, purchased is for a 30-day supply so maybe on day 20 or 21 after they've uh, received you know their, their case of wine for example once their 30 day supply is almost uh, emptied, uh, we'll send this customer an email to get them to purchase more uh, wine. Um, what, what about uh, sending an email that cross sells or, or even upsells other items on your store? Now, if your customer bought a dress, for example, um, for casual wear, uh, why not send them an email to help them complete this casual look? Uh, perhaps you can recommend a pair of shoes, a bag or a hat to go with the dress they originally but um, think about what you can do to enhance the end result for the customer on their original item. So how can you deliver an even better outcome? Uh, you need to play to their ego here, okay? So what are their wants, desires, or, or pain points, that kind of thing. And, you know, be the expert advisor on how to enhance their wants and needs and guide them into making another purchasing decision. And stack value if need be to increase the sales conversion rate. All right, guys, last on the list, uh, sequence nine, the win back sequence, okay? So the last email sequence we'll talk about today is the win back sequence. And this type of sequence usually comes in two forms. One is winning back um, subscribers who are not engaged with your emails. For example, they've not opened emails in the last 60 or 90 days. 
And the other is um, engaging with customers who have not bought from your store in a long time. So we'll focus on number two today because this post is all about, um, this presentation even is all about uh, direct revenue generation by your email sequences. So let's say this group of customers have not bought from you in the last 30 to 90 days. Uh, it could even be longer depending on the sales, like, uh, sales cycle or, or how long the supply of your products lasts, okay? So this may not be your most profitable sequence uh, simply because this audience in your database has demonstrated that they might not want uh, your offers uh, as much as you, you'd like, okay? So this is one of the sequences that gets triggered by uh, customers that not, that are that's not kind of pursuing um, our brand's desired action, which is of course, you know, to um, have a customer make a purchase from us, okay? So this audience in our database hasn't bought for some time. So we want to give them an incentive to come back and place an order. And we want to re-engage this customer and channel them back into our brand, you know, get them purchasing. So some of the ideas uh, you can use would be doing some kind of deadline driven promotion over a period of 24 to 48 hours. Or you can make the discount a little bit, you know, bigger each time you send the promotional email uh, to this audience. So send one email at 30 days, offer a discount, and try to get them to buy. If they don't buy, send another email 60 days, offer a slightly bigger discount, and try to get them to buy. Um, find other ways of, of stacking values so that your offer becomes irresistible, okay? Now, if they don't buy from that one, send them another one at 90 days, and offer the biggest discount yet, considering the idea of uh, stacking value as well. Now, I personally wouldn't go past this mark of further discounting or value stacking. If, if they are opening up these emails and continue not to purchase, um, sorry, to complete a purchase, it's time to archive them to your own engaged list and focus only on the better quality customers who are actually bringing in value to your brand without having to beg uh, for an exchange of, um, you know, value with them. Okay, so archive Archiving this, this audience will, will help you focus on valued customers. It'll reduce the stress that you're going through, increase your um, email deliverability rate and develop more revenue uh, for your brand as you focus on better quality customers. So there could be a myriad of reasons why these audiences don't buy. One reason might be because they were enticed by a heavy discount you offered and that attracts cheap customers that don't see the value in your brand unless it's heavily discounted, okay? Um, so you determine what you want to do with th those people, uh, transfer them to an engaged, unengaged list, or continue to market to them. Uh, I, I would add them to uh, an unengaged list personally. All right, guys, that is the end of the video that uh, concludes uh, today's, uh, today's um, presentation. So I hope you got some value out of this today. Uh, email is important. It is a great source of nurturing uh, relationships with your customers, prospects as well. And these um, sequences that we went over today are great for actually, you know, generating revenue from your store. So we'll touch on a few of them again. Like the first one was about abandonment uh, carts and uh, how much of an issue it is. Uh, but by using email, you can actually recover, um, you know, in a sequence, multiple, multiple emails that um, help remind you know that customer or that prospect to to go and purchase from you again so it's a great um yeah it's a great sequence to to, to sort of um acquire those people's attention and have them purchase again from you okay so then you have browse abandonment which is another great um uh, another great sequence you can use you know people who are just browsing the site but uh, don't actually go and uh, make the purchase so you can kind of touch uh, make a touch point with them on that the welcome series is great it's a great way of introducing you as a brand and kind of nurturing the relationship again offering the value what you stand for what your values are any kind of mission and uh, of course you can you can present your offers through that way as well so uh, welcome series is a great too for that and um, you know things like the post purchase review as well people who are purchasing from you and uh, you know you're giving them some time to actually digest the the, the uh, benefits of the product, and then over the weeks that follow, you can you know follow up with them on an email and say, hey, you know, if you've uh, enjoyed this review, we'd really appreciate, or sorry, not review, if if you've enjoyed this product, 
uh, we would really appreciate you uh, putting a review on the likes of Trustpilot or your or their own brand, their own branded website. And it just, uh, you know, it obviously builds out that social proof, which is highly important for building trust and your credibility and that kind of thing. And, and you seen as the, the, the sort of the uh, authority solution, basically. And um, it also, uh, if, you're d if you do it correctly, then of course, you can incentivize these people to, uh, you know, take up a coupon code and they go and purchase again from you. So um, loads of benefits to it. Um, so email, if, you know, these sequences are great for generating revenue. Highly recommend that you use an email as a back end kind of um, nurturing um, your, your, your prospects and customers and developing um, you know, the relationship and, and selling, continuing to sell to them at various different points in their customer journey. So that's it guys. Uh, thanks for your time today and uh, we'll catch you soon. Take care.